It's Debbie Potts, and I'm continuing my deep dive into all things metabolism and how to test and not guess how many calories you need per day to just survive. How many calories do you need to improve your performance each day? How many calories do you need to create a body composition change, recomp? Let's dive in to our continuation down different rabbit holes. Welcome to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the Holistic Method. Let's dive in. Now, here's your host, Debbie Potts. bonus edition. I wanted to dive into a little more about TEF, the thermic effect of food. This is known as a diet induced thermogenesis. This refers to the energy expenditure associated with the digestion, absorption, and storage of nutrients from the food you eat. In other words, it's the amount of energy your body uses to process the food you consume. Different macronutrients have varying thermic effects. Protein, as I thought, would be the number one highest thermic effect among the three macronutrients. About 20 to 30% of the calories from protein are used during digestion and absorption. Carbohydrates, the thermic effect of carbohydrates is moderate with approximately 5 to 10% of the calories burned during, during digestion and absorption. And fats, fats have the lowest thermic effect with only 0 to 3% of the calories expended during digestion and absorption. Therefore, if you consume 100 calories from each of these macronutrients, your body will use more energy calories to process the protein compared to carbohydrates or fats. To maximize the effect, the thermic effect of food, you may want to focus on incorporating more protein-rich foods into your diet, as grass-fed, ideally, meats, wild-caught fish, free-range poultry, eggs that are not farm-raised, but free-range eggs, organic dairy products, Legumes don't usually work for most people, and certain plant-based sources as tofu and tempeh if you are vegan, and make sure they are non-GMO. So it's important to note that while the thermic effect of food contributes to overall energy expenditure, its impact on weight management is just one factor among many. A balanced and varied diet compared or combined with regular physical activity, as we talk about all the time, what type of activity is important, as well as intensity and duration. It is essential for maintaining healthy weight and overall well-being. So then we might want to look at which types of proteins have the highest thermic effect. And, of course... Animal-based proteins generally have a slightly higher thermic effect compared to plant-based proteins. Some options here. Meats, fish, eggs, dairy, whey protein. is Whey protein is a byproduct of cheese production and it is a high-quality protein that is commonly used in our protein supplements. And we often use whey if you're not reactive, sensitive to it, but whey is the highest amount of the leucine in the right ratio for the amino acid profile. So whey is voted number one choice for your protein supplement. And I think the second one up is a, a beef protein that you can get from, I think it's Equip, that offers the 
beef protein powders, and then there's often the vegan vegetarian protein powders that are harder to get the right amount of amino acid profile, but you have to get a combination of the pea and gosh, what's other, a couple other sources to make it complete protein. So that was my side note as I love to go down these different rabbit holes, but which proteins have the highest thermic effect? So as we continue to go down the rabbit holes of how to improve our metabolism as we age via the food we eat, but also how we eat the food, proper digestion is key. So if you are eating the nutrient dense foods that are best for your unique self, because a lot of us have different food sensitivities because of leaky gut. So those good quality foods may suddenly become not so good for you. So we want to test and not guess ideally with a food zoomer test uh, as vibrant wellness and food sensitivities, but we want to look at nutrient density and highest thermic effect. If you are wanting to burn more calories, but also looking at, do I need some digestive enzymes when I eat my food? Do I need some HCL if I don't have signs and symptoms and test negative for high levels of H. pylori? Do I need some enzyme support? We can do a lab test as the GI map or Genova Diagnostics to find out more on how your digestive digestive system is working for you as well as your microbiome, parasites, pathogens, bacteria overgrowth, yeast overgrowth, all sorts of other things we can learn from there and correlate with your blood chemistry test. So let's test and not guess. So start saving up little health uh, money, invest in a special bank account for your health care and looking at lab testing might be beneficial if you are struggling trying to figure out which foods are best for you, which types of foods might be inflammatory to you. You can test, but also you can do some free methods as tracking your heart rate, the look up the cocoa pulse test, and also looking at your heart rate variability score. If that changes after food you eat, also just checking in with a, a how you feel, you know, tracking your food on a metabolic typing diet check record form I can send you, but really looking at documenting how you feel energetically, how you feel physically, how your brain focuses. And just sometimes it's good just to take note of how that food makes you feel. So we continue to go into metabolism and how you can improve it, but really looking at how we can improve the aging process so we can thrive as we age and not struggle as our future selves and start doing some proactive measurements now. So starting to figure out, let's look at our metabolism. How many calories do I need to maintain my weight or lose my weight, but how can I improve my metabolism? Well, it's by adding in resistance training, adding in protein. We want to focus on what Dr. Gabrielle Lyon and Dr. Donald Lehman and the other people leading into this muscle protein synthesis research and the leucine threshold and really looking at nutrient timing and looking at Dr. Stacy Sims information for the aging female athlete and taking that all into a personalized program working with a coach. So that's just what I wanted to add on. I will stop talking and going into different subjects, but I think my focus for you, I know my focus, I don't think my focus is to help you be a better version of yourself. And instead of struggling with unexplained weight gain and feeling crappy and slower and fat and sluggish, you just, which is all the same as fat, slow, sluggish, you know, we just don't feel ourselves. But instead, I think we need to just push pause, reset, reboot, and let's look at a new type of training program for you, the individual. And let's not try everything everybody's talking about on social media and podcasts and YouTube and really listen to yourself, your signs and symptoms, and let's figure out what you need as a unique individual and put all the pieces of the puzzle together to create your personalized program 
rather than listening to someone else's success and think I'm going to do exactly that because they're not the same as you. And men and women and women of different ages are going to require some different things and we have different genetics. So I would love to hear from you and let me know what your questions are, what you are struggling with, or maybe what you are having success with would be great to go on a positive. (laughs) So let's dive in to more about metabolism on the next show. Hey, my fellow aging endurance athletes, just a reminder, if you like what you listen to today, make sure to share this episode with your community. Head to debbiepotts.net to set up a free discovery call to learn more about my personalized coaching programs, especially if you are on a mission as myself to improve the aging process and start training to be my best self when I am 80, 90 years old. So I am on a mission to live my best life and be my best self the second half of my life. So if you're on the same mission as me, head over to my website and YouTube channel to learn more ways to improve the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Hey guys, if you are looking for more solutions to improve muscle protein synthesis, check out Keon. They have essential amino acid capsules and amino powder that you can add in throughout the day to get more of your protein needs because it's really hard to eat enough protein because it fills you up so much. So if you're trying to get one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight, especially for athletes. And as we get older, we require more protein and especially women. So if you're still eating a breakfast with one egg, which is six grams of protein and struggling to get even the minimum of hundred grams of protein a day, you may want to eat more protein, but then add more supplements in because that's what supplements are for. So Great information on getkeon.com. Use our discount code to support the podcast with low carb athlete. And you can check out their information on their ultimate guide to Keon aminos as they discuss do you exercise? You should be even more concerned with essential amino acids and looking at the importance of a protein as proteins in the body are in a constant flux and turnover, they say. They are either being synthesized or broken down during muscle protein synthesis. Amino acids are used to build muscle as well as repair tissues, produce energy, and promote a state of rebuilding in the body. However, during muscle protein breakdown, which occurs as a result of muscular damage induced by exercise, protein in the body is degraded and amino acids are excreted through the urine. So if you are an active person, as we all are here, the protein in your body is probably being broken down, catabolic, more frequently during your workouts, which means you are excreting more amino acids on a daily basis. Those amino acids that are lost as a result of exercise, specifically essential amino acids, must be replaced either from the protein, daily protein intake, or supplements for your body to be able to function and rebuild. So if you don't replace those lost essential amino acids, your body will tap into its amino acid reservoir, your muscle. And I do not want to lose muscle as I am working hard to build muscle. And as we age, it is a constant battle to have more building anabolic versus catabolic. So if you are doing a lot of chronic cardio and not getting your protein, you're probably more in a catabolic state, especially if you have chronic stress, you are even more catabolic state. So we want to add more protein, prioritizing at each meal, stop doing our one meal a day and start getting two meals a day with 30, 50 grams of protein and add maybe a shaken for a third meal of 40, 50 grams of protein, adding those two scoops of Keon protein powder or Brad's powder or something that works well for you. And then supplement with essential amino acids because our body will start to catabolize its muscle to get the amino acids it needs to critically keeping our systems running. And we 
don't want to lose our muscle. We can't afford to lose that muscle without harming our health. So check out this article on the Keon website when you order your supplements with our code low carb athlete, check out the ultimate guide to Keon aminos, because if we are not replacing our essential amino acid stores at the rate that is equal or greater than the rate we are losing them, we are probably going to lose muscle mass, have a harder time building muscle and or experience other negative effects on your recovery, your hormones, your energy, energy tissues, and more. And as we are talking about in this series of podcast episodes on metabolism, we know, and I see it when I do metabolic testing, your resting metabolic rate will be probably slower and lower than your age, gender, height, weight. So you want to change how you train, focus on more strength building exercises and less breaking down your muscles, catabolic exercise, and let's fit in these essential amino acids to help boost our energy, to help build our lean muscle tissue, help our recovery and repair, as well as so many other benefits you can read about as mitochondria function, helping the quality of mitochondria and promoting building those mitochondria, supporting mitochondria biogenesis, and help with the clearance of damaged mitochondria via mitophagy. So check out this article and I will stop reading it to you so you can go read it yourself. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at DebbiePotts.net. You can help us continue and grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again and see you next time.